the Stonebeards. While they certainly have their own tongue, the dwarves tend to learn the trade tongue at an early age, so as to interact with the wider world. Their first, or given, names are always in their own tongue. They often have surnames, or affectations in the trade tongue. These, in turn, often become the names of entire lines, households, kith, and clans. While they have stone buildings above ground, these are communities and strongholds chiefly to interact with the world and gain both news and trade with its various people. These outposts are like the above ground part of root vegetables. The vast majority of what truly matters lay buried underground. Xexes Thassic, Bastion of the Fathers. Thassic was a thriving community, the birthplace of dwarvendom. The kingdom once stretched under the frost fangs from the southern pole north past modern Treyad. That changed some centuries ago. The southernmost outposts ceased communication with the rest of the kingdom, when, eventually, a force was sent to investigate why word and trade had ceased, and no small groups had returned from their annual trade rounds, the truth was discovered. The kingdom's southernmost cities had not only fallen, but had drowned. They had been, in many cases, utterly swallowed by the sea, an impossibility that had nonetheless come to pass. What was more, the investigation led to the first skirmish in what would prove to be a long war with the Nebelblut, the Mistbloods. These are often called goblins by the uninitiated, but they have their right and proper name like anything else. Nebelblut shun natural light and thrive in dank, wet climates, regardless of heat or cold. They eat other sentient races just as they would any non-sentient. They also gladly eat carrion, happy for the easy meat. It was when such a feast was being enjoyed that the dwarven force came upon the Nebelblut in great number. Enraged at seeing their kin not at, but on the dinner table, the dwarves attacked, but were quickly outnumbered and had to withdraw. They were harried all the way back to the great castle of Thassic Pass, the valley that now rests between modern-day Thorian County and the Kingdom of Treyad. The dwarves fought bravely, but could not match the Nebelblut. Each dwarf was skilled, disciplined, and well-outfitted. Against this superb force, however, came seemingly endless numbers, who were methodical, if not outright mindlessly task-oriented. A wave of goblins flowed into and over the chief city of the dwarves, and drowned them in the north as surely as the water had in the south. The kingdom still exists in scattered and secluded forms, outposts and cities which have sealed off their understone ways and roads for safety and survival against the goblin onslaught. Other dwarves have used their misfortune as a push towards further interacting with the rest of Skolf. They have joined the greater flow of society, among men the world over, and can be found in every walk of life. Xexes Marai, the Secluded Bastion A monastic community in the far northeast of the lands of Shesh, Marai morphed into a thriving community, and eventually a kingdom in its own right, under the venerated Algar Tarnhammer, once Thassic was lost. Under the burning peaks of the Redhorn Mountains, Tarnhammer found and expanded a massive trove of subterranean lakes and rivers, ensuring not just survival, but an ability to thrive for generations to come. He further ordered a step heretofore undreamt of by dwarf kind. He commanded that all buildings under the open sky be ruined and made uninhabitable or outright destroyed. Marai would disappear to all save dwarven kind. No Stonebeard would reveal the secrets of Marai's location, lest they be hunted, and their lines slain utterly for the betrayal. As for those who were not dwarven-born yet discovered its location, they would be faced with nearly certain death, or a lifetime lived in honored captivity as the guests of the realm. Warren of Rosefort, Zlatopola. <laughs> 